everybody, it's Dr. Joe and Lion Callie. Arr! And today I'm going to show you my top five ways to relieve lumbar stenosis. So let's get started. Rawr! Disclaimer alert, disclaimer alert. So the first thing we're going to do is a simple knee to chest stretch. So just go ahead and lie down on your back. I like propping my knees up. That just takes some pressure off of your back, and especially if you have that lumbar stenosis, you want to bring up, bring them up just to, to relax that back a little bit. You don't have to. Sometimes people like to keep one leg down and bring the other one up, but I like to keep them bent. Another big thing is sometimes people grab up here for that knee to chest. If you have any knee issues, you might want to grab underneath. I just prefer that because that's sometimes putting a lot of pressure on your knee joint. So if you don't have any problems with your knees, that's fine, but I like to grab underneath. Once you grab underneath, just bring that knee up towards your chest as far as you comfortably can. Sometimes people have a little pain in the groin area. So if you have some pain while doing that, just don't pull up quite as hard. Just go. To comfort level. You should feel a nice gentle stretch in your low back with this and this just kind of helps open up those spaces and takes the pressure off of those nerves coming out of the canals of the spine. So you want to hold this for about 30 seconds and I would definitely do both sides. So switching is the best for me. If you want to do them all on one side and then switch you can but I like alternating back and forth so one has a little bit of a break. So 30 seconds three times on each side. So the next one is going to be a glute stretch. A lot of times with that lumbar stenosis, if you have tight glutes, that puts a lot of pressure on the spine. And again, if there's pressure there, that makes those little canals where the openings with those nerves going through smaller, and then it presses on those nerves, and that's what causes a lot of the pain. So a simple glute stretch, the easiest one is probably um, just doing the figure four stretch. If you have a hard time doing it this way, you can do it seated in a chair. But the side that you want to stretch, you're going to cross it over the other, just the top of the knee right there. And so it looks like a figure four if you're looking down. That's why it's called the figure four stretch. So you can do this a couple different ways. You want to really try and keep your back straight if you can. Some people kind of curl up like this, but if you're curling your back, you're not really getting a stretch. And if you have stenosis, even though the, the bending sometimes gives it relief, you don't want to do an extreme bending motion. So you can either keep your back straight and lean forward like that to get a stretch and I'm feeling a nice stretch right through there or you can stay in one spot keeping that back straight and then slide your heel up this way and that will give you a big stretch as well. So this is another one where it's 30 seconds. Um, I would do them on each side just like we talked about so switching in between and doing 30 seconds on each side. So either again you can lean forward with your back straight or you can slide that heel up to get that stretch. And again, that stretch should be comfortable. It shouldn't be painful, just some tension and some pressure on it. So then the next one's gonna be kind of a combination move. We're just gonna start off with a pelvic tilt, but we're gonna take it all the way into a dead bug exercise. But the, the pelvic tilt is how you start. So you really wanna master the pelvic tilt first. And all that is, is basically it's like it sounds. You wanna take your pelvis and tilt it. So when I'm doing a pelvic tilt, this little curve in my back, I want to flatten it out towards the floor or the bed or the couch. You don't have to get down on the floor. If you're having a lot of pain and it's hard for you to get up off the floor, you can do this on your bed or on the couch. Um, but the firmer, the better. When you're doing that pelvic tilt, you want to use your core and your pelvic muscles to do this. You don't want to use your legs. So if you're kind of bringing your bottom up like this, I'm pushing with my glutes and my hamstrings. That's not what you want. To help with that lumbar stenosis, to help the strengthening of the core, you want to use your core muscles to flatten it out. A lot of times I'll, I'll tell my patients, it's like you're fake laughing. Like if you're going, ha, 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 your, your core tightens up and that's what you want. You want, it, you want to feel those muscles contracting. So just holding it for about three to five seconds and then relaxing. Once you have that pelvic tilt down and you feel like you're doing a good job not using your legs anymore, then you're going to go into the dead bug. And the reason that you don't want to use your legs to hold that tilt is because now you're going to add some components and while you're holding that tilt. So I'm going to get myself into that pelvic tilt and then I'm going to take one leg and just lift it up a little bit off the ground. I don't have to bring it all the way up. I'm just trying to keep that tilt the whole time I'm lifting the leg. 
And then when I lift the leg, I'm going to take my opposite arm and bring it up. So I'm going up like this and then coming back down. So again, I'm not pulling my knee all the way up to my chest. I'm just kind of lifting it up, but I'm trying to keep that tilt the whole time. And if you do it right, it's a lot harder than it is. Like I can do, you know, this, but I'm not holding that tilt. So it's really all about holding that tilt and going slow. And then so just gently lifting up, lifting the arm up, getting that cross pattern in your body, and then slowly coming back down. And building up that core strength is really gonna help with that lumbar stenosis. So that, since this is kind of a combination move, it's a little hard to get figured out, I just do maybe three lifts on each side and then take a break. If you have to stop in between and reset the tilt, that's fine. So if I just did one and then come back down, I can stop and reset that tilt, but if, if you can hold it the whole time, that's even better. So then the next exercise is gonna be going all the way up into a bridge. So again, we're now we're gonna be strengthening the glutes and the hamstrings. So we're still doing some strengthening. With bridging, you really want to now use those glutes and hamstrings and kind of drive your knees forward. As you're lifting up, you want to go one segment of a, at a time of your back. You don't have to stop at each segment, but you don't want to just come up and down like this. You don't want to just use your momentum of your body to do it. You really want to come up one segment at a time, drive those knees forward, and then nice and slowly coming back down. So with the bridging, as long as it feels good, you just want to come to about level. You don't want to try and arch your back up. And then as long as it's not painful, you can just start off with maybe 10, two sets of 10, a couple times a day. So the last one is going to be getting up and we're going to get onto all fours or in quadruped. So once you get into this position, again, if you can't get on the floor, you can do these on your bed. It, it might be a little squishy, so that might actually make you work a little bit harder because it'll be unstable, um, but you can definitely do these in the bed. So when you are in this quadruped position or on four, all fours, you want to try and keep your back again kind of straight, tighten up that core so you're not sagging down like this, you're not arching up, you know, it's a pretty straight line. It might not be exact, but you really want to keep that core nice and tight the whole time. So in this position, you're going to do what we call a bird dog. And so a bird dog is basically you're lifting one arm and kicking out the opposite leg. So it's kind of like the dead bug, but now you're having to do a little more stability of your whole body. So if you want to just start with lifting out your arms, straightening them out, you can do that just to kind of practice a little bit. You can also then just kick your leg out, but the goal especially when you're doing the leg kick, is not to lean over and kick like that. You want your back to stay flat that whole time. Like if I had a glass of water on my back, I'm trying not to make that glass of water fall. So once you have those two pretty much mastered, then you put it together where you're putting one arm out and the opposite leg out. And really just nice, try and control it. Again, imagine that you have that cup on your back. And if you're going fast, you're probably going to spill it. So since this one's a little bit tougher, you definitely want to just start off with maybe two on each side, see how you feel, and then do that a couple times a day, and then you can progress from there. So those are my top five ways to relieve lumbar stenosis. If you'd like to help support my channel, make sure and click on the link up there. And don't forget to subscribe by clicking where? down there. And remember, yeah, be safe, have fun, and I hope you feel better soon.